A new school year starts in just a few weeks, and I feel like if you're a parent, if you're like us, you're kind of starting to panic. Just a little bit or a lot, Cynthia. Uh, well, our next guest is a lifelong Canadian educator. Her new book, For the Love of Learning, offers the unique perspective on the inner workings of the school system, and it's full of practical advice, which we love as well. Uh, so welcome to the show, Kristen Phillips. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's that time. The back-to-school commercials are on the television. Um, so we go to people like you. Your background in education, it is impressive. It is extensive. You taught for 17 years. You worked as a school administrator for 15, including as an elementary school principal in three different schools in southern Ontario. Why did you decide, you know, I want to write this book? Well, I really like learning in school, and I've been going to school my whole life. Um, but I, education is important, and everybody has a connection to school, whether you're uh, work in a school, you're a parent with a kid in school, or you remember going to school. So I sort of took all my jillions of stories that I have, and I turned them into a memoir, and it's really the year at school. So if you ever wondered what it was like to hang out with the principal for the whole year, you can read the book. <laughs> I love that. Um, you have a, a chapter called Welcome to Kindergarten and you know that's a big emotional time when you're thinking about that first beginning as a parent, as a child. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, advice do you have for parents going through that stage? Well I think there's two things. One, you have to stay involved in school. So you got to read the newsletters and ask your kid how school was today and all of those things. But the other part that's kind of trickier is letting go. And school is that time when kids start to interact with the world and navigate all those relationships without their parent around. And that can be a little bit harder for parents sometimes. So as a principal, these are my rules for going to kindergarten as the parent. One, you don't get to cry on the first day of school. Oh. And uh, no. And okay. two, <laughs> second, you can only have a kiss and a hug goodbye that lasts four seconds, not 45. Okay. You cannot sneak around the back of the school and peek in the windows. <laughs> And you, you cannot be upset when your kid has only eaten the dessert out of the very large lunch that you packed for them. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So I imagine you've seen all of these things. I have seen <laughs> all of those things, yeah. yeah. Yes, very, yeah. very practical. Um, listen, you were a single mom to three kids when you were writing this book. And on top of that, your daughter Frankie, she was uh, dealing with her own mental health challenges as well. So what is that like uh, being in the education system, both as an educator, but also navigating it as a parent at the same time? time. Yeah, so Frankie did have significant mental health issues from about grade seven to her 20s. Um, she's a young adult. She's lovely now. And we called it the dark ages now. Um, but it was terrible. It was a horrible time. And I do have to thank her because she said it was okay to tell her story in the book. And she's very brave. Um, but, you know, as a, a principal, you're seen as this expert in education. So the whole time I'm going through this with my daughter, I'm also supporting parents in dealing with their own children who might be having difficulties. And I didn't really feel like an expert at all. I, most of the time I had no idea what I was doing. So that was really challenging. Um, afterwards, Frankie said to me, well, you know, mom, you were always there even when I hated you. Aww. Aww. So there in lines the key, maybe just always being there. Yeah, always have to be there as a parent, even though sometimes I really just wished I could get in the car and drive away. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've I mean, all been there. Yeah, <laughs> we have. Um, most of the teachers you talk about in your book are wonderful, but one or two, not so great. Uh, what can parents do if they've got a teacher that they're concerned about? Mm. Well, that's, you know, that's tricky because you're, you want your kid to be having a good time at school. And I would say 99% of all the teachers I've worked with are excellent. They love kids. They love their job. Uh, but sometimes there's not a good fit with a, a teacher. And so the first thing I would say to parents is you should go and talk to the child's teacher. Uh, sometimes you'll find that the issue that you think is happening might not be quite what's happening in the classroom. Sometimes kids see things a little differently than reality. But occasionally there's a, an, a really significant issue that you, you want to address. And again, I would say to parents, don't be afraid to go and talk to the school principal. I always said to parents, you know, you're, you're not bothering me if you, you come and talk to me. And I think sometimes parents say, oh, I don't want to say anything because I'm afraid there'll be repercussions for my kid. But in my experience, that, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. we, we really want kids to be happy at school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, bullying is a reality that we talk about all the time. It really feels like it's taken on different flavors uh, with more recent generations. So, um, you know, if there's a parent who's concerned that their child is being bullied, or perhaps they're concerned that their child is the bully, what's your advice as a former principal? Yes, so, you know, my job's kind of complex that way because you deal with all sorts of conflict and bullying is certainly does happen. Uh, it's really when one kid's trying to get power over another kid and it's usually something that's repeated over and over again. So the kid who was, you know, lording it over the coat racks and deciding where everybody could put their coat, that's a problem. That's bullying and that can't happen. You have to deal with it. Um, but sometimes issues are conflict and they're not bullying and bullying becomes mm. the word that we use. And so this is, this is what happened frequently at recess, recess time and kid would come in and say, Mrs. Phillips, I'm being bullied. And I say, oh, really, what happened? I was playing soccer and so-and-so kicked me. I said, hmm, did you have the ball? Yes, and he kicked me right in the leg. And I said, well, do you think he was trying to get the ball away from you? Oh. So, you know, sometimes just normal conflict is not bullying. And that's my job to kind of tease out what it is. But again, parents need, if their kid's unhappy or saying that there's a problem, they need to come and talk to us. Because really, teachers only see about 7% of all bullying. So if it's happening, then we need to know about it and then we can address the problem. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a teaser of a book that I think every parent for sure should be reading. So thank you so much for writing it and for oh, coming here you. to talk about it. Thank oh, you, My pleasure. Kristen. Thanks thank for you. having me. Thank you so much. You know where you can get some more all around great content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with all the laughs and thought provoking chats you could ask for. So do yourself a favor, like and subscribe now.